Hey friends, welcome to the program. Hey, before we get into tonight's program, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make you aware of something. You know, all through our programs, you're going to hear me encourage you to call the number on the screen. I've got a prayer team. We're going to listen to your message uh, and we're going to pray for you. What I want you to know is I know a lot of you will never call this program. I know myself, I, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've ever called into a program, if ever. Uh, so I know there's a bunch of you that won't do that and yet you're still watching. I wanted you to be sure that you understood something. We're praying for you too. Come on, we, we pray for all of you guys. You don't have to call in for us to pray for you. I want you to know that we're still being led by the Spirit of God and that we're praying for you at all times. So I wanted you to be encouraged. Hey, you don't have to call. Just know that we're praying for you and that we love you and that Christ is still your healer. Thank you for joining me tonight. We're in the middle of a series titled Positioned to Receive Healing. We know that Jesus, before he went to the cross, he was taken and what men thought was an act from Pilate. Uh, he was whipped. He was scourged. You know, they took that cat of nine tails. You know, it was a whip that had nine strands. It had glass and metal. It had rocks sewn into it. And they took that and they whipped our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what those soldiers couldn't have known on that day, I don't believe, is this wasn't some by chance order from the governor. No, what they were doing was they were a part of fulfilling prophecy that was spoken some 900 years earlier by the prophet Isaiah. Where by the Spirit of God, he was looking into the future and he saw as recorded in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 out of the Amplified. It said, surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses and our distresses. And he carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten and afflicted by God as with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we were healed and we were made whole. This indeed took place just as he saw some 900 years earlier that Jesus would come and that he would begin to fulfill these prophecies as that coming Messiah who would make a way unto salvation for all mankind. Uh, the one that was prophesied who would make a way for forgiveness of sins and all of that came to pass and you and I we understand that right now that anybody who would desire to be born again at this very moment there's not one more thing that Jesus would need to do to be able to provide a way for that to happen. It's a finished work of Jesus Christ. If any man, any woman would want to do is what we see in Romans 10, uh, believe in their hearts, confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's on us now. That's something that we have to do to receive the finished work. But when it comes to healing now, inside of some of the exact same prophecies that had him as coming to take away the sin of the world, we also find him making a way for all mankind to be healed physically as well. But for some reason, when it comes to healing, suddenly we allow denominational beliefs, theological arguments, man's reasonings to say, you know what? I don't think healing is anymore. Miracles died with the death of the last apostle. Uh, we don't get healed until you get to heaven. Well, that'd be like saying you don't get to be saved until you get to heaven. Come on now. Jesus came and he fulfilled the prophecies just as it was written. Peter saw that. Looking back, we see he recorded this in 1 Peter 2, 24. He said he personally bore our sins in his own body on that tree as an altar and offered himself on it that we might die and cease to exist to sin and live to righteousness by his wounds you have been healed. Now, wait a minute now. Now, we got to look at this. Did Jesus personally bear our sins in his own body? Did he hang on that tree as an altar, if you will, offering himself up a sacrifice for all mankind? Did Jesus do that? Sure he did. And we see that and we accept that as the finished work of Jesus Christ for salvation for mankind so that we could die to sin. We could live under righteousness. Did Jesus do this? Because if you say, yes, it is finished, that Jesus did this, then you and I would agree that Jesus doesn't have to do anything. He fulfilled the prophecies now. We don't need Jesus to do anything else in a way of making salvation. He already did that for us. Well, the next part is if you say yes, then you can't stop there. If Jesus fulfilled any of the prophecy in Isaiah and Peter now looking back recognizing and he says yes, Jesus did do that for salvation of all mankind, then you can't stop there because if he did any of it then, 
He did all of it, and by his stripes you are healed. Meaning what? Jesus, through the fulfillment of these same prophecies, made a way unto healing and miracles for all mankind to be able to receive. If we're going to scrap part of the prophecies and say, well, he didn't really do that for healing, or if we saw where healing is done away with, then you're going to have to scrap the whole thing, and you would have to begin to question if salvation is still available today. Well, none of us are doing that. We're not doing that. Why? We got too many scriptures that point to salvation in our Bibles for all mankind. So what about healing them? Do we see any scriptures in there that say healing is done, that miracles are no more? Do we see that after Jesus died, do we see the disciples working miracles? We see apostles working miracles. Uh, we see in the Great Commission, Jesus telling the believers to go lay hands on the sick. Where would we ever come up with the idea that healing is no more? Why? Because we know people that aren't healed? Well, certainly I know a bunch of people that aren't saved, but that doesn't prove that salvation isn't for all mankind. Well, we prayed. Well, have you ever prayed for somebody to be born again and they're not born again yet? It doesn't prove that it's not for today, friends. So position to receive healing, that's the series. And my point is this, right here, that mankind through the word of God, can find himself positioned to be able to receive the finished work of Jesus Christ in his body the same way that through the word of God we discovered and we received salvation by faith. How? Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So we said we got to really find us a foundation to begin to stand upon by the word of God and we're going to have to begin to recognize the weakness in our foundation so that we can come in and begin to shore that spot up and become stronger. As we saw in Matthew 7, he said the winds came and the rains came, storms were beating upon that house, but we could reach down and be the house that remains and grab a hold of a foundation and not be the house that falls. Mark eleven twenty four 24 showed us three things. Desire, pray, believe that you receive the finished work, and you shall have it. So back to our finished work here. Somebody knowing that salvation is a finished work, they can desire to be born again, but we understand that desire alone does not mean that you're born again, according to the Bible. Uh, they can want it really bad, but none of us would ever go tell somebody, well, you know what, you're good because you just wanted it. I know you want to be born again, so you know what, you're good to go. Well, that's not what the Bible says, right? So they desire, they want to be born again, uh, but we wouldn't say this, God, why won't you save them? God, do something, because they really want to be born again, Father God. I wish you would do something, Lord. No desire and pray. Pray what? If it be thy will? No, we can't do that. Uh, we can't pray that way. We don't pray that way when it comes to salvation. Why? Because we know this topic in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So we know that we got to pray according to his will first. We got to know the will of God first. And so we already know it's God's will to save anybody and everybody. We have scriptures that prove that already. So we can want it. We can pray according to the will of God. But we can't stop there because the desire to be born again. And we can pray to be born again. But what about believe that you receive your salvation right now? Isn't that what we require from people or tell people? You prayed according to the word of God. You're born again. You shall have it. You got it. You're saved right now. You're not saved when you get to heaven. Not when you see the streets of gold. Not when you shake Jesus' hand or you see the great cloud of witness. Witnesses, you're born again right now and how's somebody going to know that without any physical proof in the natural to grab a hold of like seeing heaven or seeing Jesus if somebody begins to question their salvation what would we begin to tell them because if they desire and they don't uh, if they desire and pray but they don't believe that they received it then they're doing what well they're coming directly against scriptures that say you are saved right now and that's what we've been using to begin to shore up the weak spot and I believe that I receive. Because desire is not an issue and prayer is not an issue, but it's believing right now without any natural proof. We would shore up, I believe that I receive with scriptures. That's what we've got to do in the area of healing and miracles, friends. You can want it, you can desire to be free from sickness and diseases, and you can pray according to the will of God. But if you do not believe that you receive it right now, if you do not believe what you, if you do not believe that you received what it is that you desired when you prayed, friends, then you're not going to have it because you're just not believing the word of God. You're not receiving it. So we said, here's our issue then. We've got to find out what do I believe that I receive then? How can I believe that I receive what it is that I desired when I prayed so that I can be healed. So we said the first thing you got to know, number one, that it is absolutely God's will that you would be made well. How do you know? All these scriptures right here that you're seeing on the screen right now proves that it is 
the will of God for you to be made well. Then the next thing we said is this. How about love, the love of God, because God loves you. How much? Well, all these scriptures begin to show you how much and how and when and, and why it is that God loves you. Okay, well, I can believe that I receive because God wants me to have it. God loves me. And what else? Well, we said that God is a giver. And all these scriptures reveal that it was really a character issue with God, not just something that he was doing in action. It's actually a part of who he is. He is a giver. And so we have something to hold on to now until the manifestation comes. It's in the in-between time, uh, like salvation. We've not been to heaven yet, but we can see in the Bible what it says, and we're holding on to those promises until we actually get to see it. And the same thing with healing. It's the in-between of wanting it and the praying and having it. You've got to hold on to these scriptures, friends. You have to. You've got to hold on to them why you can prove what it is that you're believing that you receive. If you don't hold on to the scriptures, then we understand when the pain comes, when the doctor's reports begin to rain down and beat upon the house, you're going to hold on to those things. And that's the house that didn't make it, guys. I can believe that I received because it is God's will. God loves me. God's a giver. And then we said, well, how does God give? Well, some of the ways that he gives, we saw Acts 19, 11, and 12, Mark 5, and Mark 6, handkerchiefs and aprons just through material. Uh, and again, we got to understand that these are just vehicles, right? It's not about the material. We saw we're anointed with oil. Again, it's not about the oil. Vehicles just to be able to transport and deliver God's healing power. The material and the oil wasn't what was important. It's God's power, but again, he's using so many different methods to be sure that he finds a way to get healing to you. Now, we're going to shore up this part of our foundation again because for far too long, the issue's been this. We've been working two parts of a three-part scripture, and we get really discouraged and upset when it doesn't work. Let's look at it again, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Everybody's desiring to be healed. That's not, a, that's not an issue and free from physical things that are taking place. That's one third of the scripture. And pray, again, we all know how to pray. I've got four children. They all approach the Father differently and they're all right in how they do it, okay? So you pray the way that you pray and not the way that somebody else prays and that's okay. Uh, you're just talking to the Father. So there's two thirds, but this is where people are really getting stuck and they're getting upset. Uh, and they get mad at God and, and they begin to say things against healing and it's not for today because they wanted healed really bad and we prayed and they prayed and we wanted it so bad and they really wanted to be healed and we prayed and God didn't do anything. Guys, I'm only hearing two thirds of a three part scripture taking place here. Did they ever believe that they had received right then, right now? Not that God's going to do it, not someday, but today, right now. No. So it's just a lack of knowledge. Not bad people. We're not faulting them for this. It's a lack of knowledge. That's why we're doing this teaching. How do we get that part shored up? Because if we can get that shored up, then what did it say? You will have it. That's the healing. That's the miracle. That's the promise. I can believe that I receive because it is God's will. God loves me. God is a giver. He gives through handkerchiefs and aprons. He can give through anointing with oil. And what else? Well, how about this tonight? How about just the word of God? Those scriptures that are in your Bible, does God's word alone have enough power to bring healing to your body? Now, this one really should remove all doctrinal issues and, and those that kind of get upset with people who, who, you know, well, you guys think that you can just say something and, and expect that it's going to come to pass. No, no, no. This one all comes down to the integrity of the scriptures. Do you believe it? Do the words on the pages of this book have enough power to be able to heal your body. Let's look at it. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. My son, attend unto my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. So how does God bring healing through his word? Look at this now. He said, attend unto my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Well, what does that mean? That's not passively listening. That's purposely listening right there. To what? His words. Why? Well, because his words are the only ones that are going to have the power to do what you want. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, listening to his words because faith does come by hearing. And that's been the issue. Just that right there. You've been hearing what the doctor said and faith comes by hearing. You've been listening to what it is that the news said and faith comes by hearing. And you've been hearing that it runs in the family and mama had it and grandma had it and auntie had it and you're going to get it. Friends, listen, we know a woman that was told that because her grandma had breast cancer and her mom had breast cancer and her aunt had breast cancer that she was going to get it too and she had both of her breasts cut off and she didn't even have cancer this is what happens though guys faith comes by hearing hearing has to come 
by the word of God. So pay attention to my words. Now, I love this because now, on the other hand, paying attention to his words does what? What does that mean? Well, that means I'm tuning out the other words that might be coming. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Pay attention to God's words. Now more than ever, listen, if you're sick or diseased or suffering or in fear right now of anything that's going on, you really have to pull into the integrity of the word of God right now. And also what it is that you're allowing through the eye gates, the things that you're seeing. Because here's the thing, the things that you begin to see begin to enter into the mind and it forms imaginations. Listen, when you look at a doctor's report too long, you'll play that thing out all the way past any sickness you have. And you, I mean, some people go so far as to, what's it gonna be like to live with this disease? And I mean, we play it out way, way why? Because we're looking at the wrong thing imaginations. They enter into the eyes. It forms imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5 gives us some really good advice. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Imaginations come by what it is that we're seeing and what we hear. And when we, uh, what we see and hear isn't from God, it forms imaginations contrary. And we've got to begin to take all those thoughts and run them back by the word of God. And if it comes against the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? It's just the word. It's the Bible, friends. And so what we have to do is we got to cast that thing out. You got to stop thinking on it and we got to attend unto God's words. Now we can begin to form imaginations that are not contrary to the word of God. Now we can imagine ourselves healed. Imagine yourself pain free. Proverbs 4, do not let uh, his words depart from your eyes. This is the time to focus. Now, what about his word? Why do this? Because his words are life unto those that find them. And what else? Health to all their flesh. The Hebrew says medicine to your flesh. Now, keep them in the midst of your heart because out of the heart flows the issues of life. His words are medicine. Well, how do we take medicine? Well, a lot of different ways, but probably the most popular way is by the mouth. And so what if we were to fill our mouths with God's word, scriptures that begin to speak about healing? How can I believe that I receive my healing? Because God's word is medicine, God's word. I wanna hand out some free meds to you tonight. I have a 101 healing scripture CD available for you right now, absolutely free. It's about 25 minutes long, has 101 healing scriptures on there, placed to some, some soft music that's taking place there. And you can see how to order that here on the screen. Uh, but here's the challenge now. Most of the time when you are prescribed a medication uh, by a doctor, you're told to take that at least three times a day for 30 days, right? Well, here's my challenge from Dr. Donnie tonight, if you will. What if you could just listen to this CD one time a day for 30 days? Do you think that God's word would begin to have an effect on how it is that your health is, is shaping up? I can tell you I have testimony after testimony that proves that it actually does. So order that CD right now and listen. Play it. It's 25 minutes long. I, I think allowing these words into your ears is almost like hooking up an IV to your body. You know what I'm talking about? Hooking up an IV, pumping the word of God into you right there. Do it in the car while you're at work. You can find it uh, on the website. You can download that on your mobile device as well if you don't want to use CD. But play this and allow it to get into you and start speaking it and see if something doesn't happen. It's medicine to your flesh. God's word is medicine. Now, why is this so powerful? Well, because John 1.1, 1, 1, what's the ingredients? in that medicine in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God and his word are one. How about Psalm 107, 19 and 20? They cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their destructions. I love this. They cried out unto the Lord and what did God send to deliver them and to heal them? Not the holy angels, not the preacher or the prophet this time. No, no, no. He sent his word. So it appears to me that God's words are powerful enough by themselves to bring healing and deliverance to you. So what if tonight you could call the number on the screen right now, just from what we've seen, what we've seen so far. You called and left me a message and you said, Donnie, I believe I received my healing because God's word is medicine to my flesh. Would it work? Does God's word have the power that if you believed it, it could do what it is that it says it would do for you? Call me and leave me a message. Donnie, I believe I received my healing because God's word is medicine, we're going to listen, we're going to pray, we're going to call you back, and we're going we're to hook up with you through the word of God to begin to see you set free from all sickness and disease and pains in Jesus' name. How powerful are 
the words of God. Something to note now, back in Genesis, his word was powerful enough to form and to fashion these bodies to begin with. So it makes sense to me that we could speak his words and they would also bring healing to our bodies as well. John 15 and verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. His words abiding in you. Now that's like taking those medicines, right? Why did they take them so much? We want it to saturate you. We want it to totally fill you with those medications so that when they draw your blood, they'll even find it in your bloodstream, in your DNA. Well, that's what he's talking about. His words abiding in you. That's what we've got to do with the medicine of the word of God. And so again, his words abiding in you will cause you to be able to ask and receive what it is that you're asking for. Would this work for a healing? Absolutely it will. James 1 and verse 21 encourages us to receive the engrafted word of God. Engrafted meaning being a part of us, the engrafted word of God. His word will begin to get deep into your spirit, man. And we have to understand it's, it's just like medicine. It's from the inside out. It starts to build up the inner man and it pushes out through everything that is inside of you and pushes out sickness and disease. Now we're still talking about how you can believe that you receive because of the power of the word of God that is medicine to your flesh. 3 John 1 and verse 2, I love this one. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. I love this now. Now look what he said here. I wish above all things. Now that's some strong language now. I wish above all things. Two things, not two random things. Two things that are connected to help you. I wish above all things. I mean, this is, this is pretty powerful that you would prosper and be in good health. All right, now I'm going to skip the prosper part for the sake of what it is that we're talking about here because a lot of folks just think that's money and I don't want to get into that issue tonight. Uh, but I, here's the thing. I find it hard to think that being in good health is him talking about anything but our physical or even mental condition as well. I wish above all that you would be in good health even as what? Even as your soul prospers. Ooh, it all ties together, friends. This is so amazing. I wish that you would be in good health as what? Even as your soul prospers. Now the soul is the, the mind, the will, and our emotions. And this is saying that if we can get our mind and our will and our emotions, which is attached to the brain, right? As that prospers, as, as it prospers, how do we get the mind to prosper? Romans 12 and verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is that good and that acceptable and the perfect will of God. So we've got to begin to renew our minds to prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Well, how would you know what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God? Again, God's word. It all goes back to the integrity of the word of God. God's word is God's will for you and I. And so again, we got to begin to get in there. So third John says this, that, that your health is directly connected to the prosperity of your mind, meaning what? You've got to get to seeing and thinking on the word of God. Then according to what you're seeing and what you're thinking on, the mind becomes renewed to the word of God. And that word tells us what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God concerning healing. And then what? Then you'll be in good health even as your soul prospers. Do you see it tonight, friends? You got to change your mind. You got to change your mind. You got to start thinking on healing the way that God thinks about healing. I, it was important enough to him to think about it enough to send his son to do something about it. It's medicine to the flesh. Proverbs 23, as a man thinks, so he is. Oh, come on. What are you thinking on? What are you thinking on? It takes us back to Proverbs 4. Pay attention to God's words. Incline your ear to what it is that he's saying. Removes all of man and motives. And maybe you don't like faith healers or whatever. You think a bunch of stuff is gimmicks or whatever it is that you think. I don't know. But what about the word of God that you have sitting right there in your Bible, unfiltered, right there for you to put into your eye gates, into your minds, and begin to soak into that one? It has the power to deliver you and to heal your bodies. And if you take enough of the word of God long enough, hear this. If you take, it's just like medicine, right? If you take enough of the word of God long enough, I believe it can heal your body. Hebrews 11 and verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. I know at many times this is kind of an issue. Uh, we get a little bit of a hindrance because we get locked into this idea that God needs something to work with here in the natural. Could you pray that I get a good doctor's report? We hear people say that at times. Uh, well, let me tell you this. The thing that God really needs from us is just faith. 
uh, that's it. But many, we get caught in this idea, pray that I get a good doctor's report, meaning that God is able to heal, uh, but he's got to do it through the doctors. He has to do it that way. Uh, pr pray that I get approved for a certain kind of medication, possibly. Well, that's okay, too. But again, God doesn't need those things uh, in natural medicine either. My point is this. What happens when the doctor's report comes back and the medicine didn't help? Then what? Can God still do? Because we got folks who say, well, God uses doctors and he can. But what happens when those doctors can't do anymore? What are we going to do? Is there still something available when the medicines don't work and medical science has failed and the reports are going from bad to worse? Is there still something, the unchanging, forever settled in heaven, word of God that can bring healing to our bodies? I'm not speaking against doctors and medical science and medicine, friends. I'm speaking for the power of the word of God that every one of you have on your mobile device or in that Bible. And let me encourage you. Listen, here's what I want you to do. Those of you that take medication, how about this? How about you begin to take a scripture with, with each one of those medications? See, I'm not telling you to stop doing something. I'm telling you to start doing something else in conjunction with. I've seen this happen many times through the years, and it's no lie. The more people begin to take scripture with their medications, the medications begin to drop off, and the scriptures begin to build. Glory to God. Uh, Hebrews 11.3, again, referring back to the creation of mankind, how it was that God spoke. And he didn't have to look out there to see what was there to determine what it is that he had to work with. God spoke and he created what he needed to work with. So don't look in the natural at things that could be possible in medical science. And all. I mean, that's good. God needs nothing but your faith in his word. That's, that's all he needs to work with, friends. You can believe that you receive because God is a giver and he can give healing to you through nothing more than just his word. But we got to get back to believing the anointing that's on the word of God, the integrity that is on the word of God, that it's sitting right there and it's waiting for us to believe it and receive it. So the Bible gives us this little option here. It's kind of an option, kind of a question. Whose report will you believe? And that's really what it's got to come down to because we're not denying that we're going to hear a whole lot of other things. And we are, our bodies are telling us things. Medical science is telling us things. Pill bottles are telling us things procedures are telling us things no doubt that there's a lot out there whose report are we going to believe we're always going to have a few different ones and we got to begin to understand we've got to get back to believing his report that's the bottom line whose report you're going to believe i've got to believe because here's the thing the doctor's reports will change all the time this book his report It'll never change, friends. I believe that I receive because God gives healing power through the unchanging, powerful word that is life and medicine to my flesh. Call the number on the screen tonight. This is no gimmick. I want to put into practice uh, a biblical principle here that you can have what you say if it's found in the word of God. It's a biblical method that still produces Bible results. So I want you to call tonight. The number's on the screen. I want you to leave us a message tonight because we don't want to jump into this thing. We want to pray. Be sure that we're going to hear from the Lord and, and, and get back with you. But I want you to say something tonight. Donnie, I believe the report of the Lord that I am healed. And I just want you to call and go ahead and fill in the blanks that I'm healed of. Donnie, I believe the report of the Lord. And don't forget to order your 101 healing scriptures tonight. Because I believe, again, if you take enough of the word of God long enough, you're going to be healed and set free in Jesus' name. Hey, friends, Don Allen here. Hey, thanks for joining me tonight on the program. Hey, I want to take just a moment here at the end of the program, and I want to invite you to do something. I'm going to ask you to partner with this ministry. Guys, we've got thousands of phone calls coming in every year to this ministry. And you know what? We want to be sure that we're going to be able to take care of every single one of them. That being said, now well, it costs a little bit to do what it is that we do here. And so I just want to ask you again to prayerfully consider partnering with this ministry. You know, we got a big vision here. I'm sitting in the Midwest Healing Center. This is a place where man, people get to come in off of the street. They get ministered to here. Uh, there's just a lot that this ministry is doing. Truly, the, the ministry is two guys in a Bible. Christ the Healer is part of that. Uh, the Midwest Healing Center is part of that. But there's a lot of other things that we're doing. And I'm just inviting you to help us spread the healing gospel of Jesus Christ worldwide. Would you help us do that? Well, the information's on the screen, and I would appreciate if you would prayerfully consider that. God bless you guys. We hope to see you soon.